Hi again. I'm back to do a tutorial on a bracelet like I promised. And this is one I made um, a few months ago that I've been wanting to do a tutorial on. It's really sparkly and really pretty. It's really easy to make. And today I am going to make it in Christmas colors and get some Christmas spirit going here. This is going to be really pretty in red, white, and green. So, to make this bracelet, I am going to use a variety of colors here. So, in this bracelet, I used bicones all along. There are three millimeter bicones that I have in black all along the edge here. So, today, you can actually use anything you want, but the smaller the better. So I'm going to mix my colors up because I don't have any white. I have white um, Czechoslovakian ones but I kinda like these crystals better. So I'm going to use three millimeter rounds on the tips and three millimeter clear Czech glass beads. These are the fire polish. So those two we'll be using. Um, you're going to need a size 11 seed bead. So I'll be using that in the green. And the size 11 will be used on the top of the bracelet here. This was this part here will be the green part, which you'll be embellishing the top of your cubes. So I'm going to use that in green. I'm also going to use for the 15s that are on all the edge of this bracelet, I'm going to use that in two colors and I'm going to use red and I'm going to use white. Now for the cube beads, this I used a four millimeter cube bead on the back here. Today I'm going to use two colors of cube beads. I'm going to use red and clear but these are Czechoslovakian four millimeter cube beads. These are just four millimeter cube beads that you can find pretty much any bead store anywhere. You can find those uh, cube beads. So we're going to do that in a red and a crystal color. Now for findings you're going to need, um, well you're actually going to need, I'm using a size 10 beading needle today because I hate using size 12s. If I have trouble getting through these um, I'll just keep picking up different ones. You're going to need a toggle of your choice and it's optional for you to use two wire protectors but I am going to use these because I like to strengthen use them to strengthen the ends of your bracelet so it has a longer life you know so your ends sometimes this rubbing on the threads will break it so this wire protector is going to protect your threads you're going to need a pair of scissors um, we'll just put these over here because we don't need them right this minute. And today I'm going to use Esalon thread because this is the only one I have in red. But because I'm using Esalon thread, I need beeswax to condition my thread with. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So you are going to use, you know, quite a bit of thread because there is quite a bit of, of um, weaving in this bracelet. And it does use a lot of thread. So make sure you have a good supply of thread. So I'm going to just cut myself about two arm spans of thread to get started because I don't want a whole whack of knots here. Now to condition your thread you take your beeswax and if your beeswax gets all messy like this you can melt it down and just let it harden again but I can't be bothered to do that right now. So I'm going to push my thread down into the beeswax like so. Hold it into the beeswax and I'm just going to continue to pull it through and get it waxed. And I like to run it through twice just in case I miss a piece somewhere. And the conditioning of the thread because this is like not waxed thread. You can buy pre-waxed, pre-conditioned thread, but the Esalon thread is not waxed. So you, you'll have to wax it yourself. 
So I'm going to run it one more time through the beeswax. And this will be water soluble, water, not soluble, water resistant. So if you get water spilt on your bracelet and the thread becomes wet, it's not going to rot. It's going to repel off of the wax. So it is a good idea to condition it if you want your thread to last a lot longer. It does make it a bit stronger and it does help it to not tangle so much. So once you've waxed your thread, you can see all these little itsy, you can see all the little pieces. Well, you can't really see it in the camera, but there is little bits of wax on my thread. So you're just going to take your finger and you're going to pinch it like so, and you're just going to run your thread like this to try and get off all the excess wax. And you're going to do this a couple of times. This is just going to help make sure it's smooth out and covers the whole entire piece of thread. And I'm going to have to do it again. So this is what I got off of it. And we're going to do it one more time because there's still some on here. So once more, clean it off. You could use fire line too, but I'm not sure if the fire line is going to allow your bracelet to dangle the sides nicely, but it's up to you what you want to use. If you don't want to go through this hassle of conditioning your thread, and I'm sorry I'm still sick. All right, so let's get our needle threaded. And you're probably still going to get some wax residue as you're sewing on your beads, doing your bead work. Yeah, you're going to still see some wax. It might even be in the eye of your needle, which is okay. It's not going to hurt it. No biggie. Okay. And you can also buy this stuff called wax um, thread conditioner. I... I have beeswax because I paint eggs as well, Ukrainian Easter eggs. So I've got beeswax galore on hand. So I have that. I just have whatever is on hand. Okay. Now, to get started, my dog is driving me crazy here because she's scared of the noise that's happening with the um, smoke detector. It keeps beeping. I guess the batteries are going dead. All right, so what you're going to do first is you're going to pick up two clear, or if you're using two colors, like me, or if you're just using one solid color, and you're going to pick up two red. So you need to have four cube beads on your needle to get started with this ladder stitch. You do not need to leave a big long tail, just long enough to do tie weaving in. So, Maya... So you're going to take your, you've got your four beads. You can see the waxes on it. Maya! Sorry about that. My granddaughter is just having a heyday here. She's sick too. Anyway, you've got these wrapped, these four beads. So the two beads I put on first were these clear ones. So you're going to go from the, the beginning of this bead. You're going to come back through them and not through the red ones. And you're just going to join them. So it will, it will help them to sit side by side like so. So you're going to reinforce these. You're going to go back down into the red beads, like so. And I'm going to hold that. Just going to get them nicely reinforced. And back up through them. So you want to do a, just a simple basic ladder stitch. 
and pull tight. Okay, like so. And then back down through the red ones. And there you have it. This is the start of your ladder stitch. Okay. See if I can bring this up a little bit more for you to see. All right. So now you're going to pick up, because I've got red and I'm doing the two colors, I'm going to pick up two clear. And I'm just going to make a circle, because this is just simple plain ladder stitch. And I'm going to pull my thread through. As you can see, the thread doesn't tangle when it's waxed. It's quite nice. And then you're going to put your needle back through the clears, like so. And you're going to pinch them, hold them in place, and make them nice and tight. Okay, one more time I'll show you this. Pick up two colors, two beads. Nice and tight and back down through the red beads and hold them in place and pull tight. So you want to keep this nice and tight. So I'm going to go weave back through here and I'm going to go back to the beginning now because I got a good start on my ladder stitch here. And I'm going to back to these two first beads because now we're going to sew our clasp on. Okay? So pull this nice and tight. Like so. So we're back at the beginning here. So for this, we're going to pick up three, three eleven O's. Well, this one here, I done the elevens, and I put two cube beads in here, and I kind of like the way it is. But we're not going to use cube beads; we're just going to use elevens. So I'm going to pick up six elevens and one cube bead all right and now I'm going to pick up my wire protector and one half of my toggle now you put your needle through one end of your wire protector and I need to attach my toggle to my wire protector like so and I need to go through the hole of my toggle which is there and if you're not using a wire protector just put your needle through like you would any other bracelet and back down on the other side making sure I catch the thread in the wire protector and it's good and caught in there This thread feels kind of weird because it's waxed, but it will protect your your uh, your work. So you're going to go back through down in the one cube bead only, and then you're going to pick up six more six more eleven. So one, two, three, four, five, six more elevens. And you came out, you came out this side, so again you're just going to make a circle and come back through your cute bead and pull. It is funky when the thread's waxed, and this is what you're going to have. So now you're just going to get your needle and reinforce this go through this if two three times just to protect it and I like to give my wire protector a little pinch 
make it nice and tight. So to reinforce, just go right back up through the six beads that are in the row here, through your cube bead, and remembering which six you went through, and then through your wire protector and your toggle. Back down your wire protector, back down through the cube bead, and back down through all six of your 11 O's. And this is really tight. Oops, it's kind of snagged around my toggle here. There we go. All right, making sure I catch my thread in there. And I did. All right, and I got one more bead to go through. Also, this waxing should help it from splitting and back through the cube beads and that's it oh all right I got two okay so you can reinforce it one more time however many times you want. Um, I think I'm just going to stick with the two times. So now I'm going to weave my thread back here because that's one half of our toggle done. Nice and tight. If you want, you can get another needle or take your needle off this and weave that in after you do a few more rows you can just do some half hitch knots in here okay so we're going back to where we left off into these and you can see the wax coming off but the, actually when you just rub this hang on a sec you can rub the wax off it doesn't I need to fix my thread here. There we go. You could just take your um, bead pad and rub the wax off. It actually polishes them. <laughs> Protects your beads too. Getting a little bit of wax on them ain't gonna hurt them. But it does wipe, it does rub right off. So there you have just your, this is just your base row. So you're gonna continue to make this to the length of your wrist Mine is an 8 inch wrist, so I would use, I don't even know how many beads are in here, to be honest with you. I'm just going to go with the flow here. I'm going to allow myself measure it with the other piece of my toggle. And as I go, I'll just keep measuring it on my wrist and seeing if it's um, big enough. So you do the same. Finish this. Um... To the length and I'll come back and show you how one more time how to sew this on but in the meantime I am going to uh, get rid of this tail so I'm just going to take my needle off or grab another needle and weave this in there's enough here where I can go in here and do some half hitch knots so you do the same and we'll be right back okay I've completed my base row and now I'm ready to sew on the other half of my toggle clasp. So, you're at the end. You're going to pick up six 11s. One cube. And the other piece of your wire protector. Bring that down. 
and then we're going to put the other piece of our toggle onto the wire protector like so. Squeeze it, put your needle through your toggle. If you're using the wire protector, and then down the other half of your wire protector, making sure you catch the thread. And then you're going to run your needle through the red or cube bead, whatever color you're using. And then you're going to pick up six more elevens. You're exiting on this side. So you're going to make a circle and you're going to come back through this way and pull tight. And then you're going to go through all these beads again and reinforce your toggle. I'm trying to catch them all in one shot, but I don't think I can do it. Pulling tight. through the wire protector through your toggle down the other side of your wire protector catching your thread and back down through the cube and then down through the other six beads. Like I said, you can reinforce this as many times as you want, but I'm only doing it twice. So now you have this other half of your toggle in place. So you're going to find your bracelet bunching up like this. It's okay because it just pull it back out flat. See? All right. Now the fun begins. You're exiting out of your last set of cube beads you put on. You're going to pick up whatever color you want. Because I'm on a clear, I'm going to pick up red. So I'm going to pick up four red 15 O's one red three millimeter and another four fifteen o's and I'm just going to go right back through the same place I'm exiting so I'm exiting here going right back through it like so so you're going to have this Pick up four more 15s, three millimeter, four more, like so. And you're going to go back through your cubes again, trying not to catch any beads like I just snagged in there. There we go. And pull it. So you will have this. And then you're going to go into the next group of two cube beads. And again, now I'm working with the red, so I'm going to pick up, because I'm making this colorful for Christmas, I'm going to pick up five this time, five white ones. A crystal, a clear one, and five more. And I'm going to go back through the cubes that I just exited, same way. Pick up five more white, a crystal, and five more. So you have this. And I'm going to go back through the cubes again. Don't catch any beads on the where you're exiting. 
and pull these tight. And this is all you're going to do all the way down this entire bracelet. And then you're just going to do four reds, five whites, four reds, and you're going to just keep interchanging. Four, five, four, five, four, five. And I'll show you one more time. So pick up four reds. One red crystal, four more reds, and go right back through the crystals or the cubes that you exited, and then pick up four more red, a crystal, and four more reds, and exit back through without catching any beads again. It's easy to do. And so far, I'm using a size 10 beading needle, and I'm having no problem going through the 15s. So, just depends on some of the 15s. If you use Charlotte's, which are 13s, some of them you have problems getting it through the eye of the needle here, getting the beads through that. So, so you've put your reds on. You're going to go into the next group of two beads, cubes, and pick up five white. one crystal, five whites, and go back through the bead in the same place you're exiting. Don't go around and pull that tight. And I think this kind of looks cute. Um, the red thread, you can kind of see it through the white beads. It's pretty Christmassy. So pick up five more white, a crystal, and five more white. And go back through without catching your beads. And that's it. So, continue to do that all the way till you get to the end of your bracelet. And when we get there, I will show you how to embellish the top of your bracelet with these pretty green beads or whatever color beads you're using. Um, I made this black one all in black. It's nice, but it's very more morbid. <laughs> so I'll see you back here when you get all your little cute dangles on. Um, my husband calls this bracelet a centipede. So. <laughs> We're going to call this the centipede bracelet. <laughs> so I'll see you back in a minute. Okay. I've completed all my little dangles, which you guys have probably completed too. And now we're going to add the green 11 0 seed beads on top, which is very simple. So you're exiting in your last cube on the side here could be either side, I don't know. You're going to pick up five 11 O's. You're exiting this way and we're just going to keep going in like a spiral motion here. So exiting here, you're going to come through these beads here and mine are getting quite tight because I've had to tie off right here. Oops, it came through. And you're just going to come out the other end and pull this through. It's going to be quite tough for me in this one group of beads because I had to tie off there and pull tight. And your five beads will sit nicely on an angle like so. So. Do this again, pick up five elevens. You're exiting here. You're going to put your needle and come through. This is quite difficult to show you. Here. 
without snagging beads like that. There we go. And pull. And you could see the green sitting beautifully on top. Pick up five. Exiting at the bottom of this one, you're going to go across to the next one in the top and bring it through. Like so. Okay, so you're going to do that all the way along, adding your five beads. I've got a thread hanging here because I've had to tie off my thread a few times. So I'll show you one more time. Pick up five elevens. Exiting at the bottom here, you're going to go across to the next group in this way. Through like so. And pull. And your beads will sit nicely across the top. So do that, and I'll be back to show you how to tie it off. Okay, I'm back, and I can't show you how to tie this off because my thread split and broke and was too short, so I had to tie it off in a very slow pace way. And I didn't want to get into that on the video. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and you enjoy this bracelet. It is actually really pretty. It fits nice, it wears, slides nice on your wrist. So my next tutorial, I believe I'm going to be doing a ring, an inspiration from the Galaxian earrings. So make sure you subscribe and like me on Facebook. The link is below. And I'll see you soon on the next video. Bye-bye.